Then there are some global mechanisms that are developed because they are called mechanisms. That's why I thought I should highlight them. Article 10 of Nagoya Protocol has one on global multilateral benefit sharing mechanisms in transboundary situations where prior informed consent is not possible. And there's also the 2013 Warsaw International Mechanism for Loss and Damage associated with climate change impacts, which is being operationalized. Executive Committee work had four meetings that have taken place on that. They are trying to operationalize their work and ascertain the needs that are available. Synergies, you've heard about that. I don't need to talk about it, but uh, they can make MEAs effective in implementation. Sharks and rays species require cooperation between different organizations. There is CITES, there's FAO, there's CMS, there's regional, regional fisheries uh, organizations. They all have to work together. So there are times when uh, some species are being protected by so many MEAs. So unless they cooperate, then it doesn't make sense. So it's important that they cooperate, especially MEAs that are in the same cluster. There's a lot of cooperation that is going on in the implementation of the Aichi targets and the NBSAPs for those who are in the government should know the National Biodiversity Strategic Plans. Yeah, so the issue of uh, collaboration with partners, example partnerships with mobile phones, computer companies can deal with the disposal of the items, especially in e-waste. But there's a lot of partnerships even within the, NG, uh, within the MEAs themselves. Yeah, there's a CTCN with the climate, uh, the one I referred, technology center that I referred to, is hosted by UNEP in collaboration with UNIDO and supported by a consortium of partners, institutions, and more than 200 network members. So this was just to show an example of partnerships and how they work. <laughs>